class, um, I wanted to give you a little background on the diels alder reaction, which we're going to be working on in lecture this week and in lab. So for the folks who are going in on Monday, I want you to have a little bit of background. In your um, packet of handouts, which by the way are now also up on the web, you, can, you will see there's a little, um, some notes that I wrote out for you on the diels alder reaction, and I think the, we're going to use these in class and they're very useful, so be prepared for that. So what I'm going to write here is kind of the beginning of that so that when you come in, we can kind of get moving on it, all right? Um, the diels alder reaction is generally considered to be a concerted reaction. It is also called an electrocyclic reaction. All right, what concerted means, of course, is that all the, the bonds break and form at the same time or approximately, okay? As I've been saying in class, mechanism is really a spectrum. We tend to put mechanisms in very extreme situations and when in reality, there's a spectrum of mechanism. Um, electrocyclic means that electron density, electrons in pi bonds in particular, are cycling around to form new bonds. What this reaction entails is um, taking two components, one component which is called a diene, and that should kind of make sense because a diene is a compound that has two double bonds, and th this is what we call a conjugated diene, and you can think about what that means. Conjugated means you have alternating single and double bonds. And then you react that with what we call a dienophile. What is a dienophile? It is something that loves a diene. Okay, so that's like electrophile or nucleophile. Okay, um, in an electrocyclic manner, these two components react with one another and form this structure. Okay, they form a cyclohexene. This reaction is an extremely important organic reaction because it involves the formation of six-membered rings and it involves the formation of carbon-carbon bonds. Six-membered rings are extremely important in organic chemistry and in the world and in the pharmaceutical world and in the natural world and the biochemical world because they are extremely um, prevalent. So if you looked at natural products or at biomolecules, you would constantly see um, six-membered rings. Okay, they're very, they're extremely ubiquitous in nature. Okay, so it's very important for organic chemists to be able to make six-membered rings in the laboratory because we are usually in the process of trying to mimic nature or do better than nature in terms of making molecules that are useful to, to mankind. So the, the process of making two carbon bonds at once and making a six-membered ring in one shot is very important. Because of this, this reaction won the Nobel Prize and it is an extremely famous and important reaction. Um, now, why is this reaction considered favorable? Because in the reaction, which could be written this way, two sigma bonds are being made and one pi bond is being made. And I'm going to number these components. We usually number the, the diene 1, 2, 3, and 4. There is always a double bond made between 2 and 3. And I always call this component 5 and 6. And there are sigma bonds made between 1 and 6 and 4 and 5. And you're going to see in your lab manual kind of a numbering system like this. So if I put these numbers in, this is how the Diels Alder always works or almost always works. Okay? At least the Diels Alder that you're learning. So there's a double bond between two and three. You're making a pi bond here. You're making two sigma bonds. But notice in this process, you are breaking three pi bonds. So you're breaking this pi bond, this pi bond, this pi bond. So this might remind you a little bit of that oxidation I did the other day when I, I showed you that peroxide formation. I mean the epoxide formation. Okay, so we're making this pi and these two sigmas. Sigmas are stronger than pi's, so this is considered to be energetically favorable. But what I want 
alert you to is the fact that this numbering system is extremely useful and all the deals all those you're going to learn are going to work this way. The result is a six-membered ring, sigma bond between one and six, sigma bond between four and five, and pi bond between two and three. Okay, so the key is you have to learn or start thinking a little bit about how this is happening. Now in class, I'm going to give you what's called some molecular orbital theory to understand this. But the way I want you to think about this is that the diene, this is kind of a side view, is really like this. Okay, these are the carbons in the diene. There are hydrogens on these carbons. But the, the, there's a pi bond here and a pi bond there. So the way you could think of this in terms of, of orbitals is that there are these four atomic orbitals that are kind of combining to form molecular orbitals. And initially you would think of this as being one pi bond and this as the other. Another way to look at how the reaction occurs than that arrow method, which is very inadequate, is that this, this diene, which is drawn here, interacts with this dienophile which I have drawn here. And what happens is this orbital overlaps with that orbital and this orbital overlaps with that orbital. In other words, these two pieces come together. Like if this is one orbital and the other, they come together like this, end on end. And if, if pi orbitals come together like this, it makes a sigma bond. So when this sits down on this orbital and this sits down on that orbital, end on end, you're going to be making a sigma bond. And then what's going to be left over? What's going to be left over in the middle is this pi bond. And that's really how we think these reactions occur. How much time do I have? Three minutes. Okay. So I'm going to draw another picture of this. I want you to start thinking about this. I want you to build models. But what I'm saying is when the reaction occurs, There was a pi or p orbital here. It overlaps with a p orbital here. P orbital, I don't draw these so well with my markers. But I'm saying these p orbitals are coming together on the ends. And then left over in the middle are two p orbitals that become the pi bond in the final product. So again, the final product looks like this. There's a pi bond and you make two sigmas. These end-on-end -end overlaps of p orbitals become sigma bonds. This is a sigma bond. I want you to think about that. A sigma bond is a bond that's cylindrically symmetrical. We said that at the beginning of the course. How much time? Like two? Two. Okay, so what we're going to get into in class is how to combine different, do different deals alders initially, and then I'll do some orbital theory. So um, one of the things we're going to have to consider is what makes something a good diene what makes something a good diene. And then we're going to have to consider what makes something a good dienophile. So what I can tell you to get you started is that a good diene must be able to rotate into what is called the S-cis conformation. Okay. Of course, it must have conjugated pi bonds, two, at least two, um, and it's good if it has electron, this is not the only way to do this reaction, by the way, but it's good if it has electron donating groups, and we're going to talk about this in class. This is kind of like Diels Alder week, so we're going to spend a lot of time on this. What I mean by this little remark here is I'm saying you have to have conjugated or alternating double bonds, but the diene has to be able to rotate around so that these are on the same side because the bonds form at the same time. The dienophile just has to have a pi bond. That's pretty easy. And it should, it's good if it has electron withdrawing groups. And this is where I'm going to stop. But it's something for you to think about. You know, the dienophile, if the diene has groups that are 
pushing density in and the dienophile has groups that are pulling density out, you can imagine that could make the two components more attractive to each other. Now, it's more complicated than that on a theoretical plane, but that's a nice way to think about it at this level. Okay, so I'll see you in class tomorrow.